Miami Hurricane Irma one of the most powerful storms to cross the Atlantis is forecast to hit the Florida Keys around daybreak Sunday before continuing on a path that threatens catastrophic flooding along Florida's Gulf Coast. Parts of Florida were experiencing tropical storm force winds Saturday evening. We have been very aggressive in our preparation for this storm and now it's upon us. Florida Gov. Rick Scott said, Every Floridian should take this seriously and be aggressive to protect their family. Deadly storm surges could inundate parts of the state's southwest coast with as much as 15 feet of water, the National Hurricane Center said, and much of the state will see life-threatening wind impacts regardless of the hurricane's exact path. Mr. Scott hammered home the danger from rising waters Saturday. There is a serious threat of significant storm surge flooding along the entire west coast of Florida. The governor said, Think about that. 15 feet is devastating and will cover your house. Heavily populated Tampa Bay could see a storm surge of between 5 and 8 feet. The Hurricane Center said, The state of 26 million people has been readying itself for days for Irma as the storm barreled into the Caribbean killing at least 22 people and battering islands with winds in excess of 150 miles per hour. Now Irma is headed for the U.S. mainland as a Category 3 storm that is expected to pick up strength overnight as it moves away from Cuba into warm open water. Irma would bring a punishing cocktail of destructive winds, major storm surge, torrential rains possible tornadoes and widespread power outages, said Alan Albanese, senior meteorologist for the National Weather Service in Key West. This is a very serious threat, potentially catastrophic, he said. A lot of people down here in the Keys have not experienced anything with the potential this system has. Around 6.45 p.m. Saturday. A confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado was over Lauderdale Lakes or near Plantation in the Fort Lauderdale area, moving west at 35 miles per hour, the National Weather Service said on Twitter. Florida officials have warned that Irma could be worse than Hurricane Andrew, the Category 5 storm that devastated South Florida 25 years ago. Andrew killed 61 people in the U and caused nearly $48 billion in economic damage in 2017 dollars. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration the costliest storm in U.S. history until Hurricane Katrina in 2005, the storm surge will rush in and it could kill you, the governor said, more than 76. Oh, 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 electricity customers had lost power by early Saturday evening, mostly in Miami-Dade and Broward counties, a tiny fraction of the state's total. According to the Florida Division of Emergency Management, the number is expected to grow. Hurricane Irma's westward shift toward the Gulf Coast brought some sense of relief to cities like Miami and Fort Lauderdale but heightened fears of catastrophic flooding on Florida's west coast. The Hurricane Center warns the storm surge could reach 10 to 15 feet above ground from Captiva Island, west of Fort Myers, to the southern tip of the Florida Peninsula. That warning is an increase from the 8 to 12 foot range forecast Friday night. Residents on the state's west coast quickly shifted plans and bunkered down. Reed McCollum, who lives on Pine Island off Florida's southwest coast, had planned to stay at a friend's house despite a mandatory evacuation order because of reports of log-jammed highways and packed shelters. But after seeing the storm's projected westward turn, Mr. McCollum and his friends decided to go to a shelter. The current track seems headed right for Street, James City, where he lives. He said by text, jangling a few nerves here, Lisa Tilson. A Boca Raton native, has been through many hurricanes but she worried about this one. She drove to her mother's house in Sun City Center, a retirement community near Tampa on the Gulf Coast.
only to find herself more squarely in Irma's path. The family rushed to protect the home. As the storm approached Saturday afternoon, Ms. Tilson planned to stay in one hallway with her daughters, while her mother, her mother's partner and Ms. Tilson's 80-year-old aunt stay in another. She said, that's where we are going to ride it out. She said, I've had a weird feeling in my stomach about this storm since I first heard about it. More than six, three million Florida residents, about 30% of the total, have been told to leave their homes. State officials say, evacuations have led to long lines at gas stations, fuel shortages, traffic jams and overrun hotel rooms. More than 70. Oh, 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 Floridians have taken refuge in more than 385 shelters around the state. Collier County, on Florida's southwest coast, ordered additional evacuations Saturday even as officials were scrambling to find space and jammed shelters before Hurricane Irma brings potentially deadly storm surges. The county told residents in single-story homes in the Lely Resort community to evacuate. Those living in two-story homes should vertically evacuate to the second level, said Dan Summers, the county's emergency services director. He said about 15, oh, 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 people were in county shelters and acknowledged it's going to be difficult at this point to find shelter space for everyone who needs it. Later Saturday, a synagogue and a church in Naples opened their doors as shelters. A county spokeswoman said, Mr. Summers counseled patients after Irma arrives, likely Sunday afternoon. This is going to be a waiting game, he said. When the storm gets here we still have a long way to go. Be patient and understand that we may have a lot of damage to address. At Pompano Beach High School, north of Fort Lauderdale, evacuees were crowded into a cafeteria converted into a Broward County shelter on Saturday. Afternoon, the facility hit its 270-person capacity only hours after opening on Thursday, said Liz Lambert, a shelter manager. Evacuees were sprawled on air mattresses, sleeping bags and blankets. Some passed the time reading books or playing cards. Others sat at tables eating free lunches of lasagna or pizza. A group of people stood in front of a TV, watching the latest news on the storm. Terry Townsend, a 62-year-old photographer, said he arrived at the shelter late Friday night with his wife, the couple's home, as well as four rental properties they own, are in an evacuation zone. So they spent all week guarding the residences against the storm. Mr. Townsend and his wife gathered clothes, water, food and cash and headed to the shelter. The first time they have ever done so in a hurricane. As it happens, they were celebrating their 27th wedding anniversary on Saturday with Funky Pizza. Mr. Townsend said, This is the most interesting anniversary we've had. Broward County, which is home to one, nine million residents on Florida's southeast coast, announced a curfew starting 4 p.m. Saturday. We are urging you to stay off the road. Broward County Mayor Barbara Sharif said, our essential personnel will not be responding to 911 calls after winds reach 45 miles per hour. Write to Scott Calvert at Scott Calvert at WSJ.com. Arian Campo Flores at Arian Campo Flores at WSJ.com and Cameron McWhorter at Cameron McWhorter at WSJ.com.